Well, hey, welcome to Enviro Talk. Uh, my name is Travis Bowman with the Environmental Workshops. I'm the president of Environmental Workshops, and we actually train environmental professionals all over the globe. And um, uh, so if you're tuning in, this is a new program, and really it's for the environmental community, and just talking about how we train environmental professionals worldwide on technologies that are cleaning up uh, contaminated soil, uh, groundwater, and air. And, uh, but we've seen over 20,000 environmental professionals register for our workshop on six continents, 20 different countries, uh, then all across, uh, whether Asia, Europe, um, down to South America, of course, North America. Um, we're headquartered in Charlotte, North Carolina, but uh, again, uh, like I said, we train environmental professionals all over the world. And so actually, we, uh, you can check out our website, enviroworkshops.com, uh, but you can also check out Enviro Summit. We're uh, hosting a global environmental summit in Charlotte, North Carolina, uh, this September, 1st, 2nd, and 3rd. Uh, so it's a three-day conference, global um, uh, speakers from all, you know, around the globe really coming in to uh, talk about some of the challenges they're dealing, really some of the accelerating trends in the industry, um, and some of the things that they're working on, whether it's PFAS or different, uh, those, those types of challenges and technologies that, um, or technologies to work on PFAS. But anyway, here we are with EnviroTalk and really just uh, talking with some of our speakers um, uh, from around the globe and, and here in North America and uh, really obviously addressing the hot topic of today, and that's the coronavirus and how that's affecting us in the environmental industry, what we're doing. So our guest today is Robert, Robert, let me make sure I got this right, Wagenfeld. I, I got that right, yeah. You got it right. <laughs> <laughs> but our guest today is Robert Wagenfeld, and he is based in the Netherlands, and um, he actually has a biochemistry, uh, a biochemical engineering degree from uh, Rotterdam University uh, from 1994 is when he graduated, but in 2000 he launched a company uh, really for bio, uh, bio augmentation, uh, a distribution company for bio augmentation products in the marketplace. And today it's grown into uh, really a distribution uh, firm um, all throughout Europe, uh, really representing a range of different environmental technologies. Uh, and so Robert, you can talk a little bit more about that, but I, I know your wastewater uh, remediation is, no, is not just the only thing. You're also doing stuff in the remediation world and even air emissions. So so welcome, Robert. Welcome to the uh, Enviro Talk Show. Thank you for having me, Travis. Yeah. So tell us a little bit about QM. Uh, obviously, I just said you started in 2000, but over the last 20 years, how you've grown and some of the, the technologies that you're working on, projects you're working on, and things like that. Well, as you said, we started off in 2000, and uh, we started off in the field of uh, bio-augmentation. Um, Primarily, it was focused on, on wastewater treatment initially uh, and bioremediation, uh, supplying microbial products for, for cleaning up oil spills uh, underground or, or above ground. Um, industrial wastewater treatment was a big part of our business, still is, uh, in the paper industry, petrochemical industry, uh, food industry. Uh, uh, we moved also into the uh, sewer cleaning uh, industry, where we treat sewers with bacteria to uh, reduce the, the clogging of systems by fats and greases, uh, which normally clog up uh, pumping stations, lift stations, um, odor control, H2S control uh, in sewer lines, uh, algae control in lakes and ponds, uh, that's something we do. Um, over the last couple of years, we also moved into the odor control, uh, more uh, atmospheric odor control. Uh, this morning, I was at a customer in Amsterdam where they have a plastic recycling plant. All the plastic waste comes in there uh, in big uh, piles and it's then separated out so that they can reuse a fraction of that. Uh, very smelly operation inside. <laughs> and we have, <laughs> we have an odor control system there which nebulizes and uh, well, atomizes actually a, 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 an odor neutralizing liquid. In a, in a dry form, so it's not, not wet on the floor, so it is completely dry and it takes care of the odor inside uh, the building. Right. Um, in the field of bio bioremediation, we've worked with bacteria from 2000, uh, supplying contractors, uh, consultants uh, who did bioremediation projects. Mm -hmm. And that's not simply just supply the product, but it's also give advice on how to apply, how much to apply, when to apply. Uh, so you're already involved in an early stage with the with the consultant and the contractor working out a remediation plan uh, and in 2010 we uh, came across eels remediation in the us 
right. really, yeah. North Carolina. And uh, since then, we've been working with them, uh, representing their EOS products. Uh, and so you're working with past them. We do that all over Europe. All over Europe. That's what I was going to, yeah. I mean, you have yeah. projects and customers all across Europe that yeah, uh, you're yeah. working But with. for both the bioaugmentation products, which are from Bioscience, from Allentown, and from EOS products, we do all over Europe. We, we are involved in, 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 in projects. Uh, for the bioaugmentation project, that's products that's quite often just a regular supply industries with wastewater treatment plant needing the bacteria to, to, to maintain a proper operation of their treatment plant. Uh, but for bioremediation pro uh, works, that is usually project based. So uh, whenever they have a site which is contaminated and needs cleaning up, and it can be from an oil spill, petrol fuel, but it can also be from chlorinated solvents, uh, uh, any kind of contamination, we have, we, we have a solution. With the exception of PFOS, as you said in the right. introduction, right. Uh, that's still something we're working on. But uh, uh, hopefully, within the next couple of years, we will have a, a, a viable bio augmentation right. uh, or bioremediation uh, solution for that kind of contamination as that's well. That's great. But One of the things I love, oh, I love about having this conversation in you know in a podcast show type program is I think so many people think of the environmental people in our industry as just coops. And, mm -hmm. and yet the reality is pollution is a global problem and it is a pandemic. We're dealing with a pandemic, but, yeah. <laughs> but it is a problem in terms of, 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 the, of the mess that we've made. You know, we were growing up as, as kids, our mom, dad said, hey, if you make a mess, clean it up, right? And, yeah. and the reality <laughs> is here on earth, we, we have created a mess and, and the pollution Absolutely. is worldwide. And so is, I, you know, know, uh, I'm a firm believer that if we make the mess, we should clean it up. We should do something about the so contaminated soil and groundwater and air, right? I, I've been to places where people said, oh, we don't have contamination. Uh, but it's simply because they didn't look yeah. or didn't know what to look for. Right. But everywhere where humans uh, uh, have been uh, and, and have worked on an industrial way, you have contamination. And, and if you travel uh, the globe. And, and now we're cleaning up the old spills, but in the meantime, we are creating new ones as well. You know, the PFOS uh, contamination, that is that is only from the last decades. Yeah? Well, we so did our that's workshops. That's a relative new contamination. Right. I, well, we did our workshops in China um, a couple of years ago, and I, and I love our Chinese partners. And, and they're actually, you know, truly starting to uh, work on cleaning up their pollution. But I, I'll never forget, and this is two years ago, so in 2018, the hotel I was staying was a nice hotel, but in the sink, right underneath of the spigot, was a little sign that had like, uh, don't drink the water kind of sign, you know, boil the water first. And I thought, do I brush my teeth here? To, you know, and I guess the reality is most of the world, like across Europe, we, we, we brush our teeth. We, we don't think about what's in the water because it's been cleaned up. Yeah. But well, there's a lot of other places. And we have in standards, the world. you know. We, we clean up standards. That's right. And and, uh, uh, and <laughs> but so, if you don't I mean, have standards, then <laughs> it's and, and so I, I'm glad for people like you who are in the industry who are doing something for 20 years now to clean up that pollution in, in your part of the world. And uh, and that's what I love about our workshops and and uh, you know as we go around the globe, that there are different companies and different people truly trying to clean up the mess that we've created. Well, you know, I mentioned the pandemic. So let's get to the hot topic of, of today's world. And that is the coronavirus. And let's, let's talk about that, Robert. In, in your line of work, um, is it created like some new standard of operating procedures or, or, you know, what are you seeing there in Europe? And what do you got? What are you having to deal with in terms of projects and getting things done to continue on in the midst of this uh, pandemic? Well, you know, Travis, it's 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 a relatively uh, fresh situation we're in, so everybody's sorting out more or less what to do. Um, at the moment, we're basically controlled with what the government says we can and cannot do, uh, in respect of how many people can gather at a certain site. You know, uh, uh, the, the hotel in the industry, the bars, the restaurants—they're all been closed down here at least until the end of April uh, here in the Netherlands, where I'm, and that goes for a lot of European countries that were just this afternoon talking to a Polish uh, distributor of mine and they have the same thing, you know, everything is shut down uh, in respect of public uh, facilities. Uh, uh, industry still works on, you know, still the uh, food industry, this, uh, the car manufacturing still has to go on. People still yeah. need to uh, 
to get stuff, although it is on a slower, slower pace. So we are trying to find our way uh, to see how can we, can we work with that. Um, at the moment, it means that basically everything you were scheduled to do has been canceled. Has it? Uh, all the appointments that you had. Uh, we had a trade show two weeks ago, but it didn't go on. It's been postponed until June. So everything is moving forward. Every, everybody's pushing uh, uh, meetings forward until we are back to normal again. When, right. And that can will take a couple of months. We don't know. Yeah. Uh, so at the moment, that is basically what is this, the situation is. Uh, in, in terms of some of the projects you're working on and cleaning up, uh, whether it's wastewater project or like the, the customer you met with this morning with the plastics yeah. and the odor control, those projects are still going on, though. Those right? projects still go on, you know, and uh, uh, the, although you have to keep, uh, you have to respect certain rules, which are general for all the population. It's, uh, in the Netherlands, we have like a, a distance of one and a half meters in between. Yep. Yeah, so you can't be close to each other. You don't shake hands anymore. Uh, uh, all that kind of stuff. Uh, so if you're traveling by car to a to, to a site and you have to go with a coworker. You basically have to go with two cars. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that's the uh, that's the, the new standard. Are. Yeah, I, I don't know how big the cars in the U.S. are, but in Europe they're not so big, so that's we a, can't keep <laughs> one and a half meters apart. <laughs> it's a bit difficult. And you're a big guy too. You're tall, like yeah, I am, so <laughs> like you are. <laughs> so, so that's uh, those are the, the 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 standard things you have to respect, you know. And uh, but it makes common sense. You you it's not just for yourself, but it's also for the people around you that you have to respect those uh, those rules. Uh, have you seen in our office? We, uh, I work alone, so I don't have any employees that that I can interact with uh, physically. So I can go to work every uh, every morning yeah. uh, to the office, and uh, so that's okay for us. Uh, but there are a lot of other companies where they have to slow down. Office staff has to work from home. Uh, if they have engineers going to sites, yeah, they have to look into it. How do we manage that? So what you, what would you currently see is that that like like projects that are scheduled to be implemented at the moment they are put forward they're pushed out but yeah they're pushed forward but yeah. but but projects that are already running yeah they keep on running you know they and, keep on and, going. and a, a lot of our products are injected in the soil and that's what a, a two three day operation and then you can leave the site alone for a uh, for a long time and only do some monitoring which is usually a one guy operation anyway Right. one or two guy operation so uh, for those running projects it doesn't affect by remediation projects it doesn't affect that much okay. and with bio augmentation where where you're dealing with wastewater treatment plants yeah those those plants are operated i mean the the the, the, yeah. the site is still producing goods uh, products and wastewater is still streaming in so they still have to deal with that right but we are not directly affected by that because Quite often, that's a standard operation, and we supply product, but we don't come on site every every day or every month. Have you seen? Uh, obviously, we know um, in Europe, there, Italy has been the hottest spot, and in Spain, I think, is second to that. Have you seen Same. different procedures or, or government uh, regulations of what you can do in certain countries that you're working yeah. in, or that you have? Yeah, yeah there, there, again, those are general guidelines. You know, in certain countries, there's a complete lockdown. So that means right. you, you're not even allowed out on the street to go to work. Right. You have to stay at home only to go do some shopping, maybe to get some groceries. That's it. Uh, France is like that. I think Spain is like that as well. In Belgium, they have this. Uh, in Holland, in the Netherlands, for, fortunately, we're a bit more relaxed. You know, you're still allowed to go out, uh, but you're not allowed to group with more than three people on yeah. the street. And you have to keep your distance. Um, events over 100 people uh, who are what we call licensed. They need a license to 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 happen. They are all have been cancelled. Uh, but you can still take a walk in the yeah. park, and you can still go uh, shopping, uh, and you can still go to work if that is okay. You know, if you're not in a in a room with 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 10, 20 people, but you're if you're if you have enough distance in between, that's that's okay. Yeah, that's about but in other countries you're... like Belgium and Spain and Italy, it's a complete lockdown. Nothing happens. Right. And that, that's what I was wondering with your projects getting, I mean, obviously you met with a client today, a, a plastics plant. You were able to visit them, go on site. Yeah, um, and yeah but I was talking to him as well this morning and he was telling me, yeah, we got a lot of people 
this is a big plant, you know, they have uh, maybe 60, 70 people working there. Yeah. And he said, we have a lot of people that call in sick. Oh. Not because they have corona, because it's eh, whenever there is an epidemic, you know, when, every, every year when there is a flu epidemic in the yeah. Netherlands, yeah. you've got a lot of people calling sick just because they can. <laughs> <laughs> and then there's that problem, right? Yeah. <laughs> Do you know? so, <laughs> are, are they really sick? We don't know. But they're like, hey, yeah, we got a good excuse right now, right? Yeah. <laughs> so that's, uh, that happens, you know. So, so uh, everybody is affected by it in one, yeah. one way or the other, you know, at a certain level. Uh, you all feel it. And uh, yeah, it's something we have to go through. That's yep. it. Yeah. That is true. Well, hey, I th this has been great. Thank you so much, Robert. I appreciate your time. And uh, hey, stay safe, stay well out there for sure. Um, and uh, I know we'll be doing workshops again in Europe once this is over and done. With. <laughs> I know we've looking already scheduled. To see you again in Europe. <laughs> yes, I look forward to getting back over there. I know we're planning on doing. Uh, I think. Well, let's see. Matter of fact, while we're talking about, it, I think uh, next time we're going to uh, doing workshops in Stockholm. Uh, if I remember right, I think we're going to Frankfurt, um, mm -hmm. trying to remember Oslo. I think we're going Oslo, to yeah. Oslo, uh, Warsaw, Poland, and even down to Croatia, if I remember right. So those are the next five nice cities trip. we yeah. plan to get to. So, Hey, thanks so much for coming on the program and, uh, for the bio talk and, uh, stay safe. You too. All right. Yep. You too. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.